Hey everyone and welcome to Storytime. My name is Jake and today we are going to be looking at some stories from the Discord. So basically how this will work is I actually have a Discord, which is top link in the description, which I've told you guys sometimes about, where you guys can actually submit your own stories, which I'm going to be reading some of today. So it'll kind of be like a mixture of all different types of subreddit stories, but it'll actually be your guys' stories. If you have a really good story that you think will be really good to feature, then all you need to do is join the Discord in the link and then go to the stories channel and just type it there. But without any further ado, let's sit back, relax, and enjoy some funny Reddit stories. Here's a story for either malicious compliance or entitled parents. The cast includes entitled aunt, awesome mum, cousin, K for me, and brother. So I was in town recently, waiting for my brother to get done with his appointment. He was at the dentist and having anaesthetic, so he needed someone to drive him home. And who would I come across while I'm waiting? My mother's stepsister, entitled aunt. Face palm. Now, a little backstory. My mum's dad divorced my nan and remarried a very sour and unpleasant woman named, who had a daughter, two years older than my mum. Now, my mum and entitled aunt have never got along. They hated one another for a long time. My mum lived with her mum, while the entitled aunt lived with her mum and my granddad. Entitled aunt also has a daughter called C, who is about eight months younger than I am, and if you know me, Consider C my polar opposite. Two people could not be any more different. And unfortunately, as we grew up, C and I were all pitted against one another in our mum's competition. Who was smarter, prettier, kinder, etc. Now, this story starts with my brother, who was an extremely sick child. He was in and out of hospital until he was 16 with a colourful array of health problems. Some very serious ones. This particular time, when I was five, this is important for later, and my brother was three, he got very ill and the ambulance came to take him to hospital. My mum wasn't allowed to bring me with her and because there was no one available to look after me, she called the entitled aunt. They had somewhat buried the hatchet and were on speaking terms. Entitled aunt offered to take me for the night so my mum could go to the hospital. This was before my mum could drive, so she had to get the bus to entitled aunt's, which is the next town over. It was late, mid-November, and I had a small backpack and my winter coat on. Also important. My mum thanked Entitled Aunt and dropped me off, rushing to catch a bus that would take her to the hospital. Herein lies the nightmare. Entitled Aunt drags my coat off and throws it into the cupboard, then orders me to sit down in front of the TV. Things get a little spotty here, this is an old story. I recall being given a sandwich and a drink, then after about an hour, Call it 6pm, the sun had gone down and it was dusky outside. Entitled Aunt tells me to go upstairs and to bed. I have never been one to disobey, so I went. Only, when I got to the, my cousin's room, where I assumed I was staying, I found my cousin laying on the floor and screamed. Entitled Aunt rushes up and it turns out my cousin had a bad fever and was supposed to stay in bed, but got up and collapsed. Now, here comes the fun bit. Entitled Aunt gets my cousin back into bed, then proceeds to grab me by my arm and pull me down the stairs. I recall nearly falling, if not for her grip on me. All the while, she is shouting and swearing that I'm the worst person in the world for hurting her baby girl and that it is my fault, cousin is sick, etc. Entitled Aunt then throws open the front door and physically drops me into the front garden, telling me to get lost. She then slams the door behind her and locks it so that I can't get back in. Now, I cried just a little as I knocked on the door several times saying sorry and pleading to let me in. It's now nearly fully dark out, I have no coat or bag and it's cold. Seeing as Entitled Aunt wasn't going to let me back in, I wandered around the garden for a bit, sitting by the gate. Then I get the best idea ever. See, about a half a mile from her house is my great grandparents. They are my stepdad's grandparents and I love them to bits. Rest in peace. So, I decide, in the wisdom only a five-year-old can know, that I will walk to their house. I have been down that route before, from Entitled Aunt to my grandparents' house, and I remembered the way. I have a great sense of direction, even as a child. So, I walked the 15 minutes from house to house. Take in mind, while this area was not rough or really dangerous, you definitely wouldn't leave a child outside unattended at this time of night. But I'm a smart kid, and I get there without any issues, even crossing main roads by myself. By the time I get there, I am cold, 
shaking and a little wet. English weather doesn't give kids a break. When my granddad opens the door and I see his sweet loving smile and confusion, I break down hard. All the stress and worry and hurtful comments just exploded and I wept. My granddad, being the best person ever, quickly got me inside and sat me by the fireplace in his lap. Eventually, they get hold of my mum and explain through my tear-filled sobs what has happened and she is livid. She gets her mum to stay with my brother while she races back and knocks on the door. I explain to the best of my ability what happened and she stands up, thanks my grandparents and calmly walks out the door. Later, when I was old, she told me she all but broke down in Title Dance door and punched her in the face. I recall her sporting a black eye for a week or so. My mum got my coat and bag, then walked to the back of the other house. I stayed with my grandparents for a few nights and my mum split her time between staying with me and my brother, who made a good recovery after two weeks. From that point onwards, I was never to be left alone with Entitled Aunt, nor did I ever stay at her house again. Fast forwarding to the present day, Entitled Aunt and the lovely cousin, sarcasm much, are struggling to push a double pram and carry a third child who is screaming loudly. When I said cousin was my polar opposite, it also includes the fact that she gets around. She has got around herself on occasion. I know about this through family. And she has three children, all to three different men. Both look like beluga whales, and Entitled Aunt is sporting colourful bruises all over her face. The black eye is what reminded me of this story. Neither woman has a job, and are forever having to move house because they won't pay their rents. They see me, recognise me, and say hello. They go on about how well I look, and how the family is doing, etc, blah blah blah. Then ask me how I'm doing. I relish in telling them about my job. The unwanted but temporary raise. Everyone is happy. Fine. Brother is much better in health. Younger brother is successful. Basically, whatever good I have going on. Is that petty? Yeah, probably. Entitled Aunt then asks me, out of the blue, if I can give her a loan. What? I of course say no. For one, they are practically strangers to me after no contact for many years. Plus, I am aware of their finances and doubt I would ever get a penny back of whatever I give them. The cousin jumps in, calling me selfish, that I wouldn't even give them any money to feed her children. How woe is them, they can't afford to feed themselves. Now, if this were like 10 years ago, I would have been too timid to say anything and just given in. Now, I'm not stupid. I tell them to get lost and that after the way they've treated my family over the years, they can sure bet any bridges that were left have been burnt. We get into a shouting match, more they were shouting and I was very calm, about how disgraceful I am and how ungrateful I am after the years they put me up. This is where I very loudly reply, Oh, like when you threw a five-year-old out onto the street in the dead of winter after agreeing to look after me. If that's how you treat your family, I think I might call social services. Wouldn't want your children to freeze to death. The look on their faces. I have never thought of myself as petty, but oh my god, the looks I got from the people walking past was priceless. They quickly made their excuses, grabbed the children and walked away. Not before they shouted that I am never welcome in their home again. Didn't think I was to begin with though. Thankfully, it didn't take long for my brother to get finished up and we went home. Sorry for the extra long story, but I'm still chuckling about it and wanted to share. Let's talk. Entitled white person. EWP is entitled white person and me is, well, me. This is a story that happened in 2015, but it is burned to my memory like it happened yesterday. It haunts my mind because of how uncomfortable and honestly kind of scared it made me. So buckle up and get ready because this is some wild stuff. So I'm mixed race, half black, half white, with roughly 3C hair. Think Nathalie Emmanuel or Tamira Maori, and kind of tan skin. Ethically ambiguous, but still dark enough to get followed in stores. This means white people specifically think they are entitled to touch my hair or comment on my body. A lot of the BS I deal with is a white person getting into my space and treating me like a petting zoo. And depending on the situation and how tired I am, 
I will tell them off. My reactions ranges between politely asking them to not do that, to flat out grabbing their hand before pointedly touching their hair. God, do I wish this was the worst thing an entitled white person did to me, because now I almost want to thank them for being a normal level of creepy. One day, I was relaxing in the family room of my house, on a large worn leather couch we have. That's older than me, and incredibly comfortable. It was summer, so the sunlight was streaming in through the windows from our backyard, and I was in shorts and a t-shirt, trying to stay cool. In walks the entitled white person. Which isn't that weird, because I've known her my entire life, and she's just at home in my house as I am. She comes in, and stands in the threshold between the kitchen and the family, just watching me. This is her usual behaviour, because I'm long as hell and drape over any piece of furniture I'm on, usually getting comments like, well, don't you look comfortable? And the answer is always, of course, because I am. Nope, nope, not the usual question. First she starts with a compliment. God, you're beautiful. Now, compliments make me uncomfortable due to history and people complimenting me just because they wanted to manipulate me or date me as a joke. So I just shrugged and gave it an awkward thanks before returning to the art piece I was working on, thinking the interaction was over. Oh, how wrong I was. The following words that she spoke haunt me to this day. There are very few times I have felt so uncomfortable before in my life. And I've walked alone at night in suburban white America. Give me your skin, she whined. I want to wear it. Record scratch. Freeze frame. What? That's right, this woman really pulled a get out with me. She really said serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer level stuff to my face. This woman asked to wear my skin. What am I? A furry suit? Now, at this point, my brain just froze. I was stuck. I couldn't move. I didn't know what to say to this. Like, what do you say to that? I wanted to bolt. I wanted to turn into Shaggy from Scooby-Doo and run a goddamn Great Dane as I yeet myself down the road to get out of my own house. Ah, uh, thanks? I asked awkwardly. I was not allowed to cuss an entitled white person out. I would have gotten wrecked for doing so. But holy did I want to. What? Why? Your skin is just so beautiful, she said. I want to wear it. Give it to me. It must be so nice for you. People with skin like yours are all over now. She was pouting. She looked kind of envious. I, to this day, cannot tell if she was joking or partly serious. But either way, what in your right mind makes you think you can ask someone to give you their skin? And for a reason as creepy as as I want it because now it's beautiful. Some days, I want to know what it's like to live in a white person's head, where they think they are allowed and it's okay to say these things. I get that not all white people are like this, but also, this was the mindset used to enslave an entire race of people, only now it's diet version. I just shrugged and looked back at her. Haha, <laughs> yeah, too bad that can't happen. I was starting to sweat. I was so creeped out and uncomfortable. My eyes were wide. I was just staring at my tablet out of fear as my skin crawled and briefly I had the ridiculous idea that my skin was going to slip off my body and attach to her. I'm sure we can think of something, she replied cheerily. Nope, 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 nope. I stood up and yeeted myself up the stairs and away from her. I have to go to the bathroom. I did not go back downstairs for the rest of the day. Every time I see the entitled white person, I feel super uncomfortable. I still get some creepy comments from her like, I'm so jealous of your long legs, why don't you give them to me? Or, God, I wish I could just rip your hair off your head and use it as a wig. Again, literal get out level type stuff. When I watched this movie in 2018, I had flashbacks to these terrifying and incredibly uncomfortable conversations. Now. What some of y'all are probably wondering is why I just don't avoid this person. But I am 19, and I live in the middle of nowhere, where the closest grocery store is through the goddamn woods. And it's kind of hard to avoid your own mother. Hey everyone, I hope you're all having a really good day and that you enjoyed that video. Remember, if you want to submit your own stories, then you can do so by joining the Discord in the description down below. 
If you want to check out some other videos, then click on screen right now or check out the playlists on the channel. But thank you again so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.